everyone. Welcome back to another MEF webinar. Uh, we have another session here for you all about fraud. It's kindly sponsored by Box Solutions. So thank you very much for, uh, for that sponsor. And we have two people here from Vox as well. Uh, but as I said, today is all about fraud. The title is Fraud, the Next Generation, the Industry Fights Back. So we have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, we seem to be having a little bit of technical issues with Ataya's camera. Uh, hopefully, maybe you can get that going while we're presenting all the slides and everything. But first, I'll introduce Asan Am Amadi, who is the CEO and founder of Box Solutions. How are you doing, Asan? Hi, Ross. I'm fine. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. And then we have Theodore. Uh, from He's the chief of staff of Box Solutions. Hey, Ross. Thank hey. you for the interview. Perfect. And then we have Atai from uh, Sky Mobile Beeline, uh, all the way in Kyrgyzstan. How are you doing, Atai? Hey, hello. Thank you. Fine. Thank you for the introduction. So, yeah, as I said, it's all about fraud today. So we're going to show off this, this anti-fraud solution that the box have for us. And I don't think anyone would disagree with me when I say that to, to solve fraud, we all have to work together. It doesn't matter where you are in the value chain. Everyone has to kind of come together and figure out where these bad players are because with only sort of pieces of the puzzle, we, we can't really uh, we can't really do anything about it. So I believe I'm going to share some slides now. Um, just give me a moment. Perfect. And we go full screen. Apologies. Okay. Perfect. So I'll take it take it away, Theodore. Thank you, Ross. Uh, so if we go to the agenda, I think today we are we're mostly talking about three different things. So First, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the context. And here, basically, we want to cover challenges that we've seen in the past months increasing and most importantly, uh, creating pressure on MNO revenues or harming otherwise people in the chain. Then I'll uh, let the sun discuss about how we've been able to solve these problems and generally what is our approach to it in terms of technology. And lastly, also have a tie to discuss of how our collaboration with Sky has been going and also how we've managed to um, go over the issues that we've encountered in the also in the past months. Um, I think Ross, if we can go to the market section, I will definitely start with that. So we all know here in this call how dynamic the telecommunications industry is, right? And I believe we all agree that now is the time where MNOs and players along the chain of all types adapt to the changes in the market. Um, in such times, additional challenges like the ones that we want to talk about can be burdensome on revenues. Specifically, in the past months, we've seen two areas that we believe require increased attention because they can impact the revenues of everyone in the chain, if not addressed. Uh, on the left-hand side, we're talking about fraud. Um, and as the site title of the webinar suggests, so here specifically, fraud or monetization partnerships with operators around the world in different geographies, we've seen three negative trends that must be addressed. I'll summarize them here, but bear in mind um, that there is detailed content for each of these and, and the next slides coming up. Um, specifically, we firstly wanna talk about SMS crashing, then about artificial SMS generation. Now, we've seen increased usage of both, but what is troubling is that we're now seeing a combination of the two, which under the same roof can have uh, quite big negative effects on OTTs, people including aggregation, but also MNOs. And the last trend is increasing volume of fake or artificial traffic done under a few mechanisms, not only for commercial gain, and such examples include SMSC hacking, social media bots, or account hijacking. I'll go cover all of them in detail, and then I'll also discuss uh, flash calling. As for now, in, in our projects and collaborations with MNOs globally, we've seen that flash calling is increasing its penetration as a 2FA method. We see it gaining traction, and we know it's difficult to identify it without dedicated technology, of which actually very few exist. So we'll turn our head here to the potential of SMS cannibalization, uh, which happens if flash are not addressed. Now, I will go on and um, switch to fraud. So, Ross, if we could go to the next slide, I'd really appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, perfect. Maybe just to take it back to basics, maybe uh, explain what SMS trashing and artificial traffic, traffic generation are just for the, uh, the people who aren't savvy. Absolutely. So, um, 
SMS thrashing has been around for some time, and it's the process by which a fraudulent player, be it aggregator, trader, or anyone else in the chain, receives ATP SMS traffic, however, decides to stop or delete part of it. Uh, this is legitimate traffic, and it never reaches the end users. Yeah. So what basically happens is that a portion of the traffic sent OTP, let's say OTP traffic sent from the uh, OTTs, reaches one player and it basically stops there and only a portion of it terminates in, in the network. Since it's not a new mechanism, OTTs around the world basically set processes in place to monitor the conversion rate of, of the traffic they sent, right? Um, leaving it here and switching to artificial SMS generation, artificial SMS generation is a process where reversely uh, one party generates artificial requests for receiving OTPs, but they're not meant for real users, right? When low, when we only have low volumes, it's not really a problem, but we've seen players generate millions of such messages. They can be, for example, uh, for social media accounts. And we know when we've seen in the recent Twitter scandals, right, that there's basically hundreds of millions that of social media bots that exists. Uh, they have OTPs generated for them, but also it's the case where OTPs are, are generated with no end usage, basically. Like you, a sign-up won't be, won't be done on the other part, right? The problem comes when the two are combined. When this happens, basically the mechanism, which we've put now here in the slide, becomes very powerful to manipulate the conversion rates of OTTs, and it gives any fraudulent party a powerful tool to basically trash traffic at the way higher rate and without control of the MNOs. Um, to talk about how this comes into play, I'll give everyone an example. Let's say um, that a fraudulent party is included in the aggregation and in the chain and works with an OTT. The OTT would send 100 one-time passwords and the fraudulent party would generate an additional 100 requests, right? That are artificial. Now we have a total of 200 messages, right? If the fraudulent player decides to trash 40, it will deliver 160 of the 200, that's 80% conversion rate. If the aggreg aggregator would trash 40 of the 100 legitimate ones, that would be a 60% rate, right? At the 60% conversion rate, he would be basically eliminated automatically from, uh, from the chain by the OTT. What that basically means is now players have the power to increase the artificial uh, volumes artificially and increase the conversion rates as at the end of the artificial requests, they are the ones that are able to convert that OTP that is sent into uh, registration. Now, that basically means that the mechanism gives powers to fraudsters to trash more messages than before, and all players in the chain are hurt. Specifically, OTTs are hurt because additional costs are generated, right, because of the artificial traffic. MNOs are hurt because of the legitimate traffic that is sent. Part of it is trashed without the, M the, without the OTTs having direct control or visibility over it. And thirdly, other aggregators are hurt as well. How that happens um, specifically is the following. When artificial traffic is generated, the party creating the requests has the power to convert them, right? If other aggregators are included in routing, let's say, while this player is not, that artificial traffic would, as said, artificially drop the conversion rates of the other players as the players basically wouldn't have the power to, to convert that request, right? Um, so it's hurtful to everyone in the chain involved, and this is why we're bringing it to you. It's a very dangerous game, and we've seen it in play. And uh, we've recently seen it uh, actually a few times in our projects. Specifically, we had instances where OTTs believe the conversion rate is about 80%, but in practice, over collaborating, working together with all the parties involved to figure out what that is, the conversion rate on the legitimate traffic sent is 40%, right? So OTTs pay double the price, but and MNOs get only a share of that. 
the only way to, it's difficult to mitigate it. It's not easy, but that's why we're coming we're coming to you with this information. Um, the only way to mitigate it is by having all players working together in the chain. So the OTT players, technology players, and MNOs. I let the son talk about it and address it further in the presentation. <coughs> and um, I, I know he can shed more light on, on how we've done it. And also we have a tie to discuss on, on such challenges that we've, we've also seen with Sky. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, Theodore. Yes, I mean, uh, basically what I can add here is that we, we end up to have a situations like uh, the uh, MNO themselves, they have a lower conversion rate uh, when OTT is, let's say, sending the traffic directly to MNOs. That is crazy, right? <laughs> so uh, uh, there are some aggregators in the market that they have a better conversion than, uh, rate than, than MNOs, and then, uh, I don't know, exclusive uh, aggregators of uh, appointed by MNOs and so on. So uh, these type of, I mean, I would say very, very complex type of uh, fraud uh, done by some fraudsters that definitely they have some very advanced technologies can be it cannot be mitigated easily. Now even OTTs and uh, big inter enterprises that they are technology heavy by nature, they start to struggle. So we start to en enter in a new era that uh, even OTTs, uh, they need technologies and they need solutions in order to mitigate uh, the fraud and they cannot handle by themselves. Uh, as, uh, as Theodore mentioned, uh, co conversion rate measuring or conversion rate tools uh, were implemented by many OTTs and used to be very successful mitigating different type of fraud, especially SMS trashing, which today is not uh, anymore the case. And uh, that's it. Uh, that's that's why we uh, sorry. That's why we step in. Uh, we start to look for a solution. We seen this first time one year ago, almost one year ago, and now we see more and more. It's increasing in different uh, networks and different uh, regions. Uh, we started to build a solution around that, and so far we managed to work with uh, MNOs, aggregators, and um, uh, OTTs uh, to to mainly to do awareness, a lot of awareness, uh, notifying them, doing awareness, informing them. Many OTTs started to realize about that. Uh, they, we, we start to educate them. Sometimes they go after uh, cheap routes um, just because they are cheaper, they want to reduce their cost, but then they get heated by the fake traffic and then they realize that actually on the end of the day, they didn't re uh, reduce their cost, but Actually, they, they have an extra fake cost on the end of the day and a lot of problems with their customers, bots and this and that. So we try also to educate them to, to, to try to uh, don't go after, I mean, whatever uh, aggregator come and offer better price, don't, uh, to don't jump uh, and uh, put, uh, use their, uh, those routes. And definitely in this process, we also identify some bad actors uh, that they were eliminated from the chain um, and we keep working with all the good actors uh, trying to identify the because these type of activities bring suspicious to I mean create problem with all the ecosystem the, the, the trust between all the players starting to be impacted you don't know whom to trust anymore uh, and it is a this is a sentiment that a business, uh, uh, no business uh, needs it, right? No market needs it, and we we want to we might want to make sure that this trust stay. Uh, so far, there is OTTs um, trust a lot, MNOs trust a lot, most of the aggregators and CPS players, but these some some uh, some bad actors uh, impact the whole image of the, our uh, our industry, which is uh, a shame. And we try to to fight back and to uh, mitigate and to 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 fight with this type of phenomena and uh, make sure that the trust um, uh, will stay. The yeah, trust. Very well said. I think we also have one question here, as I as I see it. So the question is exactly um, under this mechanism: How exactly does the fraudster 
make the money <laughs> or where is the commercial gain if for artificial traffic um there okay. has to be a termination cost paid to so, the OTT. uh this is this type of fraud still is uh evolving i would say but so far what we realized through testing and monitoring the network and traffic and doing a lot of kind of uh, analysis um trying to understand is this work this way uh, the bots generate the otp uh message sms the fraudster capture the traffic in uh, in the chain between let's say the fraudster here is after the ott right okay this is a very a simple diagram they capture that traffic and they convert it for them and they don't send the traffic to mno they, so they have no cost it's zero right and all the uh, all the revenue is profit for them at the same time because the co their conversion rate is higher than other aggregators because the, that traffic generated by them if they go to other aggregators or to some other aggregators that they don't have control over this traffic it will not be converted so their stats conversion rate stats look lower and worse than uh, the fraudster in this chain so the fraudists are going to receive most of the traffic because the conversion rate looks better than others. And at the same time, they start to trash some traffic because they don't want to have a high, too, too, much, too big conversion rate either. And at the same time, they want to generate uh, more profit. Because, and so we, on the end of the day, we have, as Teodor gave the example, they have 100 messages and 100 generated. Uh, they Those 100 they convert it artificially so they manipulate the conversion rate pure profit and then the next 100 that they receive they trash 40 percent on the end of the day the conversion rate will be 20 80 uh, percent okay but 100 messages are fake and 40 percent are trash in this uh the only one that winning is the fraudsters mno is losing 40 percent of the the traffic which is trash the legitimate one uh, OTTs pay for 200 messages instead of uh, 100 or and they actually the, the only messages that are delivered are 60 out of 200 so they pay for 200 but only 60 messages are delivered because um, part of it's fake and part of it is trashed and uh, users they need to ask for the one that part of the traffic was which was trash. They need to ask for uh, OTP again, so user also user uh, experience it also drop. So you see all the play and other aggregators that are uh, legitimate one. They are the, the the ethical ones. They lose the traffic because OTP complain that uh, their conversion is lower than um, other. You know, the, the low, low conversion is low. So everyone lose everyone. Uh, yeah. big time and the only winner is the fraudsters uh, fraudsters yeah. and then on the end of the day also the the whole ecosystem uh, and the trust uh, over the system and ecosystem is, is dropping also big time so this is something that uh, yeah is unacceptable and uh, uh, yeah absolutely I, th I think we hit the nail on the head right at the gate so uh, very well said I, th I think your point stands that no one really benefits from this doesn't matter where in the value chain you are and also I, I think you're kind of highlighting as well that sms trashing and artificial traffic generation are bad by themselves but together they're kind of a deadly combination so uh, we really have to be careful about this because yeah because actually the conversion rate uh, looks good the one that doing the fraudsters has the best stats in this that looks case. believable as well like it doesn't yeah, and doing also the bad most bad. of trash yes the yeah, most yeah. of trash is done yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Theodore, I think uh, we got a bit sidetracked there, but you can carry on with your presentation if you like. So, the, um, going so, I think this is it for uh, crashing and uh, artificial SMS generation. On the next slide, we also have three other mechanisms that we've seen that also come into play for generating very thick traffic. In the purpose of time, I'll go over them a bit quicker. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to address them more in detail. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a few questions, but uh, why don't we just save them till the end, and you can just work through your presentation, and then we can uh, we can start working through the questions. Sure, absolutely. So um, these these three are SMSC hacking, social media bots, and account hijacking. 
they still relate to fake traffic, but the mechanism and rationale behind them is, is different. For artificial SMS generation, we've seen basically it's for commercial gain, right? Um, in the first case for SMSC hacking, when this happens, it ends up generation of spam or phishing-like messages. For social media bots, we've seen, so I mean, the, the main play here is the identity theft, identity theft or personal information theft. Um, for social media bots, we've seen, as, as said, multiple players with basically farm, farming bots, right, uh, with millions or hundreds of millions of bots for social media bots that exist. There are a lot of, a lot of them are used for influencing the public um, opinion them. Opinion to create them, there is a high volume of ATP SMS that must be sent. Um, and then they're used for registration. Uh, this is not necessarily done as in some cases for financial gain, right? as with artificial traffic generation, but indirectly it creates additional cost with no real user behind it. Lastly, account hijacking. Uh, here, A to P SMS is used to capture credentials for different social media accounts. Again, it's happening for informational or personal identity theft. So these three instances don't have a financial gain play directly, but they all harm the customer experience of mobile users of operators around the world. Within our projects, we've encountered them. And again, I look forward to Hassan telling you how to address uh, this basically, but we will cover that in the next section of, of the presentation. To still talk about the market switching from fraud, I'm gonna go on and talk about flash call uh, and the increasing penetration of flash. Uh, as Ross, if we, could, if we could go on with the previous presentation, I'd appreciate that. So, um, I don't know if everyone is familiar with flash calling, but generally it's a mechanism of having 2FA done by an OTT missed call, by a Telegram, by a Viber. Basically what that happens is uh, through OTT missed call, the app fetches the code contained within the A number and the, the uh, user registration is done in the background with the user not actually having to type in any code um, and it, it happens automatically, right? Um, now with the customer experience being better than that of A2P SMS and notably with lower termination costs, the estimate from Juniper Research, for example, is that flash calling volume will reach 128 billion calls in a few years from now. Um, and that basically means that the volume of flash will more than double every year, right? Here we see it increase because of few factors. So first it has lower cost. Second, with the application running in the background, the customer experience is better than over A2P SMS. Third, it's, it's interesting for some verticals, for example, FinTech, because this is a missed call. It doesn't contain any content, right? It can't be manipulated and it's more difficult for that to be hijacked. So for financial institutions or any play like that, it can actually be safer than A2P SMS. Um, and what we see is the possibility of it shifting to FA to multi-factor authentication, for example, as again, it's, um, it has a very interesting use case for certain verticals. And the same time, if that only goes under the assumption that MNOs have the technology to identify Flash and have the ability to monetize Flash. So to actually put in, create an official channel for Flash, build Flash, rather than having Flash as it currently is. As it currently is, there are missed calls, there is no determination cost is zero, and it's just a substitute for A2P SMS. And with increasing traction, it, will can, it has the potential to cannibalize A2P SMS or part, uh, I mean part of it, right? If it's built, it can actually lead to also um, increased penetration, multiple factor authentication, and they can also expand the A2P market rather than cannibalizing SMS. Um, in the next slide, we have some examples of penetration we've seen across markets. So um, we've seen in Latin America that most or, or a third of, of um, the top OTTs are, have um, onboarded basically Flash as a 2FA mechanism for signup. We've seen OTTs uh, such as TrueCaller, Badu, and Glide exclusively working on Flash. We've seen in Pakistan that um, there was an instance where 
basically TikTok volumes decreased, A2P SMS uh, from TikTok codes decreased by 70% in a few months, uh, only because it shifted to flash. And also we've seen in the CIS region that uh, uh, in some instances and in some markets within that flash uh, reached almost 20% of A2P SMS. So it's not insignificant. It's a trend that must be addressed and it has the potential to actually increase revenues. However, MNOs must possess the adequate technology in order to address it. And with this, I'll give the floor to Hassan and talk about how that can be done specifically. Perfect, Hassan. Uh, you're on mute, by the way. I think we have that's here- not, That's happened at least once in the- in a webinar, someone's on mute yes, when they yes, talk. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah this, this slide is for trashing, right? So we talk about flash or tra so I think- Oh, sorry. Should... Okay, yeah. So uh, uh, flash, uh, last year flash was almost unknown by most of the players and most of the MNO, I mean, in the market. Now uh, do have a lot of awareness around flash, uh, we see more and more uh, MNOs uh, and players starting to look at. Uh, this is good. We see some initiatives. We see companies, uh, MNOs like uh, Beeline, um, Sky, uh, and many other MNOs that we are working very closely with them, starting to adopt different uh, strategies, uh, implement different solutions, uh, uh, working with the solution providers, technology companies to, to, to address this uh, problem. Um, the, the, the phenomena happening on the voice side, okay, it's not on this, and so it, it cannot be mitigated by regular SMS firewalls, right? And the traditionally A2P was mainly about SMS, nowadays, it's not anymore only about SMS, as we see flash and voice OTP starting to, um, uh, come back to life, let's say, on the voice side. And uh, the new generation of firewall should also uh, uh, be able to manage the flash and voice part. So nowadays we talk about, when we talk about A2P, we talk about omni-channel or multi-channel type of firewalls. If uh, th there is no a successful A2P monetization um, strategy which do not address uh, which doesn't address both uh, both channels uh, a voice and sms um, i think this is more and more most of mno starting to realize that but uh, you know um, we expect uh, next years uh, all the mnos upgrade their solution with the uh, all, all, all their monetization solution and their firewall to can uh, cover also flash and uh, in a way or another uh, to monetize and control uh, flash. Otherwise, uh, they may face, like you see with Pakistan, many MNOs, they have a huge problem with the different OTTs. They, they start to lose their uh, revenue on the A2P, most of traffic shifting to uh, shifting to flash and voice, which they don't... Uh, make any revenue, they don't have any mechanisms to, to monetize it. Uh, and I think this is not something that can uh, be uh, can stay sustainable, can be sustainable in the long run. Uh, definitely MNOs, they need to do something about that and OTTs should start to, to pay for, okay? A fair share to MNOs because on the end of the day, they use the infrastructure of MNOs. Um, yeah, so this is, the, this is our view and what we see around Flash uh, recently. Cool. Great, we'll move along now. So, HP. Okay, this is a trashing. I think we discussed about trashing uh, enough, right? <laughs> we can go yeah, move yeah, to yeah, the exactly. next. <laughs> so, we just move along. Okay. It is about the, what, what I just mentioned about uh, SMS uh, A2P strategies, not anymore, only voice, uh, only SMS, sorry. And it should cover also voice channel. And all the firewalls uh, for A2P should cover voice and SMS channel both. And we at Vox, we uh, we are the only the, the first company that uh, offered in the market um, voice uh, and the SMS firewall. I mean the full omni-channel A2P uh, firewall. We have quite um, 
vast experience around voice uh, and SMS and uh, flash and both of them. Uh, recently, maybe some, I mean, I expect some others also start to look at uh, market is dynamic. Uh, but so far, we have uh, over 10 uh, pro successful projects uh, around Flash and SMS both. And uh, we, we have more, uh, we have a lot of demand uh, from MNOs uh, to, to help them uh, upgrading their current A2P uh, solution uh, to cover also Flash. Um, and things uh, moving quite well. And um, I think we are starting to also work with the OTTs closely to uh, to uh, somehow uh, onboard them as well to start to pay a fair share to MNOs uh, and we see also openness from uh, OTTs to start to pay uh, because it's just not for sustainable to use the MNOs network for free. What do you think are some of the benefits of uh, you know closer collaboration between the OTTs and the MM MNOs? Um, as you see, for OTTs, uh, on the end of the day, MNO, uh, voice and SMS and uh, their relation with the MNO is like a vendor. So they, they for them, uh, all these services are, are, uh, are representing costs, right? But at the same time, when they want to get rid of this cost or they want to reduce this cost, if they don't do it in a sustainable way, it can fire back. So as you see, they can they they may fall in uh, the trap of fraudsters with the fake traffic, this and that. So on the end of the day, instead of reducing their cost, their impact, their quality of so, uh, services, their customer experience, and they are they ending up to pay even uh, higher cost. Uh, same with flash, they could have issues. Uh, so the best way is to have a kind of uh, a, a fair relation between all parties, and we are here to help and keep uh, bring OTTs closer to MNOs and uh, all the good players, and uh, to 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 collaborate with each other in order to uh, in order to have a, on the end of the day everyone to benefit out of it. Yeah, I think that's the main point of today is that this kind of fraud hurts everyone. You know, it's not good for, for pretty much everyone along the chain, except for the fraudsters themselves. So the better, you know, the quicker we can kind of suss it out and, uh, you know, fix the problem, basically, the better. So, uh, Theodore, do you have anything else to add on this slide or will I move along? I think for me, it was it was pretty clear on what a sunset, but then again, I also know the solution and technology behind it. So maybe for me, the explanation definitely was, was good enough. Uh, I don't have anything else to add. And if anything, I look forward to the questions. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, we'll just move along then. So I believe, okay. Now here we are. What I so, can add, Ross, is here that is as the, the fraud type become more complex, also the solutions needs to, to, to in solutions to mitigate this type of fraud should become even uh, I mean become more complex as well so that's tip type of solution that we had two three years ago to mitigate different type of fraud in the a2p area or other areas are not working anymore do not do the, 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 the so and 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 uh, technology companies should keep innovating should keep investing in their solutions in order to keep up uh, with the dynamic and make sure that uh, do not uh, lose the ground uh, against protesters. They are very creative, very motivated, and very wealthy. As you see, we talk about a multi-billion market, and uh, these guys, uh, uh, in in many cases, they are they are. Uh, I would say they are uh, they are very. We see that they are very uh, innovative and they manage to gain also tremendous amount of money. They invest in solution and many of them, they already have some type of AI solution, very advanced technologies. It's not like, uh, I don't know, uh, there are some poor guys in the in the corner. No, I mean, yeah. and um, that's 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 make the, the challenge even getting to the next level. And we are here to fight this with all this phenomenal Perfect. around us yeah, great so. yeah so i we, we have a load of questions but i think maybe we should uh lead into a ties uh case study first and then we can start uh, getting into the 
the questions. Does that work for you, gentlemen? Absolutely. So I think just to wrap this up, um, and as it said here nicely, we've seen, for example, like the challenge, these the challenges that we've uncovered in, in past months are quite difficult to address for MNOs, for example, without having the appropriate technology. And most times, if, if we're talking, for example, about Flash, that doesn't is, is not really handy um, in order to develop it as an in-house solution, right? Um, we've seen, for example, on projects in the past months um, that fake traffic accounted or artificial traffic accounted for about 20% of all traffic. That is a very high share, right? That's very difficult. Only not only from a revenue point of view, but from a customer experience point of view, you're talking about uh, spam, smishing, and a lot of traffic that is harmful to users uh, around the uh, around the world and across networks. Right? Um, flash again is increasing. Right? It's not easy to detect it. It's very difficult to monetize it. And as a sense that we're the only ones to actually have the technology to do it. But the whole point of this is that. Everyone must work together, but also it is important for all MNOs um, to, in, in terms of priorities to address customer experience and have that in an optimal point to have the right technology partner. And here I'm gonna introduce Atai, Atai um, because Sky Mobile is, is uh, one of our partners and we're collaborating with them. So they're very, uh, they place very high focus on customer satisfaction, customer experience, which is absolutely amazing. And we have him here to talk about how he's seen the collaboration, basically tell everyone what the challenges um, they had are and how they managed to, to overcome it. Perfect, Atai, take it away. Yes, hello everyone. I'm sorry for absence of video, but I hope the sound is clear. Yeah, we can so uh, the, the, the two main challenges that we faced are the um, flash calling and the second is the artificial ATP traffic. So uh, let me just firstly introduce myself. My name is Atai and I'm a roaming technical expert from SkyMobile Kyrgyzstan. And I would like to share with you experience we had uh, working with uh, Vox during last year in uh, details. First of all, I would like to point on the problem that I assume every mobile operator faces uh, nowadays, and it is uh, flash calling. And you all know how it works and how it affects ATP revenue stream. And I think that it's obvious that we always try to find the best solution or decision that would let us to forget, forget about the issue. Uh, I would even say for some kind of magic pill and even being honest i don't remember getting a flash call from the services or applications during last time even though we have uh, several activities in our department which are performed precisely to 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 test major services for example, to find out if there are some changes in registration process or, or what kind of options they provide to know the OTP and if they have some other ways as well. So yeah, before we already had our own stuff to handle it, but uh, on top of it, we have at the moment a work solution implemented almost in every voice connection we got. And as I know, the solution is um, much more comprehensive than just uh, analyzing voice traffic or SMS trunks. And hence, now some improvements are underway in our systems. And I'm sure that it will also influence our awareness of uh, any fraud that might be applied to our network. And yeah, so eventually I can say that Vox solution has contributed uh, its perceptible impact in uh, our ability to fight the flash calling. And finally, the second, uh, the second point I would like to tell about is, uh, is the issue that we have faced and overcome recently 
and it is the artificial A2P traffic. As it was mentioned before, before uh, we had it starting from May this year. And at first sight, it may seem that you receive more money from that. But in fact, you receive only more issues as the number of complaints from subscribers is growing and the conversion rate is decreasing rapidly which leads to blockage of real and live traffic. So the services can see that the conversion rate for a particular network is getting lower, but uh, the number of requests for OTP is growing at the same time. And eventually the network traffic is being blocked particularly or fake requests supersede live subscriber traffic. And I would say even generation of fake a2p traffic sometimes may have ridiculous and at the same time i would say awful consequences because uh, yeah but fortunately we did not have such cases in our network but it happened to networks we work closely with um, for example it was a complaint from a subscriber who has a who, who's a young and married man. And the reason of complaint was uh, that one message from Tinder that, yeah, and it could turn out to his divorce. So, yeah, <laughs> his wife somehow noticed or saw this registration message in, in Tinder. And I'm sure that you all understand what kind of discussion it was. And uh, or the second example, uh, yeah, of course, it's uh, it's more funny than the previous one. But anyway, uh, one subscriber received a message from Binance. Uh, the Binance is the, the application for cryptocurrency storage or exchanges, trades and so on. So the subscriber uh, get the message and then he thought that someone hacked his wallet and wanted to steal his crypto from Binance account. And then he just blamed the operator's network not to be much secure. Yep. So um, as we can see that, uh, yeah, at first sight, it, it may it may seem like a strange case, but subscriber might be scared at this point. And we can see that uh, artificial A2P traffic or uh, fake traffic generation is not only about earning or losing money. And um, by the way, not to forget to mention as well that this may lead to subscriber loss. In some networks, as I know, the cost of getting or the cost of luring a new subscriber is uh, quite expensive. And it's not allowed to lose him just because of single A2P message. So uh, these are only cases that I know, but I'm more than sure that it happens uh, globally all over the world to all the networks. And different cases might happen. But anyway, in spite of fake A2P traffic or art artificial traffic, I hope that all families will stay together and no money will be stolen. Yeah, and I think I'm done with my part, dear colleagues. Yeah, and yeah, very well said. No, very good point made. Uh, Asan, do you want to add to that? You, you it was very uh, funny, funny stories, but at the same time, sad. At the same time, yeah. sad. No, I mean, yes, and and exactly. not everyone is tech savvy as well. So, you know, there's probably a yeah. lot of elderly people and stuff like that who get these sort of things and, and believe them. So, you know, it is sad. Um, but yeah, sorry, continue, Asan. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sad. You can imagine the extension. When these type of things happen, the extension of the harm that they could generate are, are in, we cannot imagine. Uh, right. So we have two examples. Maybe there are many uh, even worse examples, much sad examples. 
uh, which harm the people. And you can imagine these people uh, cannot sleep, <laughs> cannot, I mean, they become anxious, they have, they create problems, families, divorce. So uh, just for, for, because some people, they want to make uh, some money or some extra gain, uh, it is re really a shame. Um, uh, we have all these type of problems, social problems, family problems, people are impacted, customer experience, MNOs could use their uh, subscriber. That's why it's not about just uh, some people trying to do, I mean, they, I mean, to, to do some money, but some MNOs uh, they, or some aggregators, they see it as an extra, extra, extra profit because uh, the SMS, uh, they are billed. But when you look at the whole picture, you see, I mean, the, the all harm that can bring by uh, impacting the whole system, the whole ecosystem uh, on the midterm, long term is huge. Uh, imagine that if OTTs lose on enterprises, lose their trust in SMS. And they are start to look for other technologies, right? Because it's not just not secure, just right. Uh, how that can impact MNOs that maybe, or some aggregators that today are happy that maybe make some a little bit more money. Um, that also is something that uh, even on the mid long term is not sustainable. So if we, I mean, it's a just for for small gains. Uh, I don't know the short term. Um, just uh, so, some some players just don't uh, pay attention. Um, and fraudsters are the one that only I, I keep saying that in all the webinars or wherever I'm uh, on the panels. I mean, the fraudsters are the only one that winning. Everybody else losing. Everybody, every all other players losing. Short term, mid term, or long term, or or, or on all the levels. So everyone is losing. We we need to team up. We need to work very well together. Uh, be unit and try to fight with this phenomena. Not saying, okay, it's not mm, impacting me, let it go, or I don't know. Uh, we need to work, we need to pay attention on that. It's sooner or later will impact, uh, if we don't pay attention and we don't mitigate this problem, sooner or later will impact us. I mean, any player, all of us will be impacted. Uh, and also the customers and their trust. So. It is not something that we can just leave it as it is. We need to do oh, something yeah. about it and we need to work this together. Is real. It's here now. It's our, It's just it's only growing now. So now is the time to do it, not later. Um, and you, I, I really thank you, Atai, for coming and sharing a couple of very, very good examples for people to understand how sad they are. I mean, even users, not only about B2B business here, we are here. It's also about users that are, uh, we put, uh, some people are in pain. Some people are impacted big time, okay? And it is really sad. So thank you, Atai, for your very, very good example. You put some another type of notion to this uh, fraud is more human type of, you know, I mean, mainly we talk about only uh, revenue, leakage, this and that. But your examples are very, very powerful. Thank you very much. Yeah, Atai. yeah. Well, not just here. about the money, but about the, the, the people and the subscriber experience. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, at, at the end of the day, besides from, you know, everyone making a bit of money, it, we should look after the consumer after all, you know, we're not, we're not just robots up here. Um, gentlemen, I think we should start answering some questions. We're getting to that time. Um, I can see Theodore has been answering, typing away in the, in the comments, answering some questions, but maybe we can bring them up on the, um, bring them up here. So let me just end my screen share one moment. Okay. I think Ross, the first two we've answered uh, as part of what his son said or myself said. The last three, from what I can see, are the are the ones that are pending. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So I think the first one is from Katia, uh, Katia Gonzalez, uh, which is what percentage of the total flash calls can be detected realistically? Uh, if uh, I take it. Uh, uh... I'm, I can talk about only our experience. So far, there is not many experience. So, <laughs> uh, from others, uh, we are the most active one in this field. Um, we managed to, in in three months after implementation of the solution, we managed to detect over ninety percent of the flash codes. 
we can identify them over 90 percent of them we can identify after three months because it's based on machine learning uh, assisted machine learning so basically I mean, we need a little bit of time to build the stuff and if they won uh, over 80 percent over 80 percent yes they they won uh, of the implementation and after three months we reach to over 90 percent um the reason that it is going quite slow, I mean, we cannot mitigate uh, maybe 98%, 99% quickly is because we need to make sure also that we don't block the good calls, right? Because they are very identical. Sometimes the A numbers are manipulated with the real numbers and uh, they're very identical with the real calls, good call, legitimate calls. So in order to make sure that we do not block a call that is a legitimate one, a right one by mistake, uh, we we are very cautious and slowly, slowly we uh, uh, we start to block the, the flash as the machine learning system learn better the patterns. And uh, usually over 90%, I would say after three months of implementation is achievable to be, to be identified and then definitely mitigated, blocked, rejected, or depend on the MNO strategy, monetized, uh, whatever. So over the, the short answer is over 90%. Perfect. Um, I think the next one, Theodore, you might have, you answered earlier, which was about, uh, you know, the, the, the fraudster being the one to uh, pay for the termination of traffic. I think they added another point. They said, but First, the fraudster in your diagram still has to pay. Uh, do you do you want to reply to that or? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, the um, there's two sides to the coin. The player that combines trashing with artificial SMS generation, or artificial SMS generation, just can can just boost trashing. Right, that's what is happening. The financial gain happens twofold. So first. Obviously, you even for the artificial request, right? You still included that you are part of routing. You receive revenue for all traffic while only terminating some, right? And for what you've trashed, it's financial gain. What Asan also said is that basically for the artificial request, a fraudulent player can intercept being part of routing the OTPs, right? And convert that without having it terminate in the network. So the conversion rate goes higher, but there is zero termination cost. So you have zero termination cost for the artificial ones that you've generated with 100% conversion. And you also trash part of the legitimate traffic for which has zero termination cost. So it's an extra profitable uh, combined mechanism, let's say. Yeah, so there I is no termination right. cost. It's just the cost of technology building bots and putting yeah. the system in place, but uh, yeah. which is quite complex. And that, that's why I'm saying that protesters today are very rich and very yeah, tech exactly, heavy. Yeah. So, but that's, but that's the main cost. There is no termination cost. It's pure gain. Exactly, yeah. And as you said, you know, there is the tech, the technology cost, but you know, the, these fraudsters are basically a business now. A lot of these guys, they're, they're as advanced as us, if not more. So we just have to be more on the ball. Um, I think we have another question here, which is when we talk with SMS aggregators, they just lose the money. Is there a way to overcome this shift? In fact, the revenue is just shifting from SMS aggregators to voice players. I think they're talking about flash calls there. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys want to reply to that, Asan? Uh, for aggregators, I think you, you need to start to also in, uh, to, to, to offer to your customers also flash, I assume. I mean, the, you cannot do anything. <laughs> it's a new technology that if your customer decided to use that one, uh, aggregators should work with MNOs, uh, buy from MNOs that's willing to monetize directly flash and selling flash and resell to and serve their customers. Otherwise, definitely they are going to lose their, uh, there is no other way around. I mean, if, uh, um, if their customer decide to, to use Flash instead of SMS. Yeah. I, I, I had another question from myself, uh, which was regarding other channels. So obviously RCS and WhatsApp. Uh, do you think there's potential for fraud in, in these channels as well? Uh, 
the, the type of fraud that we are now we have we are quite more around the SMS because if you see, if you look at the if we look at the WhatsApp and so on the the ecosystem of WhatsApp is much closer while the ecosystem around the MNOs is very fragmented so they can control better the fraud around the WhatsApp uh, and the the the, the revenue around WhatsApp today is not that big comparing to SMS and voice. We talk about over $60, $70 billion of SMS and voice, while uh, I don't think WhatsApp today doing even $1 billion, right? Mm. So uh, in the future, most probably we're going to see also fraud in those areas, but uh, I expect they be easier to control, to be controlled by even WhatsApp themselves, yeah. um, since it is a kind of closed environment. And they, yeah. they they can control and they manage end to end. Yeah, and I, I think you kind of highlighted a point that we've said dozen times that's a sort of fragmented landscape that is you know the the SMS. So how, how do you convince? But in like, RSCS, but in RSCS, excuse me, uh, but oh, in so RSCS yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna see the same. We exactly. expect to see the same type of phenomena that happening on the SMS. Yeah. So that's a, do you not think that maybe Google might be able to? Uh, control it in a, in a similar way so maybe whatsapp might be able to or it's not it to end either so when you talk about google messaging yes which is yeah. everything happening in the google environment but when yeah. it comes to the, the when we talk about we, we and when mnos come to into picture then you see i mean we have 1000 uh, almost 800 900 mnos and almost 1000 and something mnos which those on yeah. those are part so over 2,000 of MNOs and MVNOs. Yeah, absolutely. Fraudster can have a big, huge ground to play. <laughs> It'd be a picnic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so how, how do you, how do you, as Vox Solutions, convince value chain players to cooperate and kind of share their information? Because that is such a key thing, you know? Today, today we, uh, the way that we work is we work closely with the OTTs and trusted aggregators that we know that they don't, I mean, if they do something wrong, they do by mistake or they are not aware, but they are not fraudsters. They are not actively doing fraud and so on. So we work with these players closely. Every time we see anomaly in the, um, in the traffic, uh, we generate alerts to different players uh, worrying about something ha happening. I mean, you have, a, there's an attack, there's some fraud, fraudulent traffic, smishing, phishing, spam, fake, whatever. And we help them to take some actions. Some of them, they have, uh, they put some technology around, some uh, some procedures around to, to mitigate that. Some of them, they have solution, they receive solution from us. But even those that doesn't have any solution from us, we try to we try to do awareness. We we inform them wherever whenever we see something uh, happening, and uh, we we work closely as much as we can do and uh, closely with them. Absolutely. Um, so I, I we're coming to the end, but I have one or two more questions. Uh, so obviously, this webinar in a way is is kind of helping helping to fight this kind of fraud just simply by raising awareness but when it comes to organizations like MEF do you think that there's anything more that you know we could be doing or similar organizations could be doing to maybe to fight this kind of fraud I think so far MEF doing a great job uh doing awareness I wasn't pushing for a compliment there but we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> you and your colleagues Ross are doing a great job I mean this is all you can do awareness awareness and awareness and the market is very dynamic so Things moving or changing constantly, so you need to keep awareness and updating the the players about what's ha what's ha happening. And this is the key in uh, helping the ecosystem, helping everyone. And it, this is key. Awareness is key because if you don't, so you don't know what you don't know, right? I mean, if you don't know if something exists, you never take any action. So yeah. it's very it's it's key. And uh, thank you very much uh, for all you do for your for us yeah. for our for more market our market yeah thank you for for sponsoring the session and being here uh, do you have any kind of closing remarks you want to leave for anyone any, any last thoughts to keep in people's minds uh as them the 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 fraud become fraud types become more complex and uh 
hard to mitigate, uh, hard to, to, to identify and, 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 and very, um, I mean, we see kind of as, as sad uh, situation that are combined are very complex that the previous talk doesn't work. We need to work with all the players. I think we need all the players. They should put on the side their ego or I don't know, the competition because sometimes we are in the aggregation space or even in MNO space, we are competitors as well. Okay. But when it comes to fraud, we need to work together. Uh, doesn't matter if you are competitors. Uh, technology companies like us as well. We need to work with each other. We need to work together, okay? Because on the end of the day, this is going to uh, harm all of us. Uh, when it comes to fraud, we need to work together and put the ego and competition or I don't know, these things uh, uh, aside and uh, work um, together. And I invite MNOs to pay more attention to like like Sky, which they did a great job. They look uh, continu uh, constantly on their for uh, after their customer experience and so on. Atai and their colleagues, uh, they to pay more attention to their customer experience. Not looking just A to P is not a junk, just a revenue and making <laughs> money. Right. You know, okay, that can be that can help them a lot to retain their current customer, or they they can also that can impact them if they don't any they don't pay attention. Uh, and they, as, as Atai said, I mentioned, they, they may lose uh, customer trust and their customers, which is very, uh, very painful nowadays, which they, they, when the competition is very high between MNOs to gain new customers, sometimes in some markets, a new customer cost MNOs $600, right? Uh, or even more. And just for one SMS that maybe is five, 10 cents or something like that, they can use like hundred dollars of uh, worth of uh, user. Uh, and, and, and if you've multiple 1,000, 10,000, 1 million, then you can imagine well, how big the impact uh, can be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so we're, we're really, really cutting it close to the end, but I noticed that we have one more question. Uh, Theodore, do you want to jump on that last question? Uh, it's if, just as a closing closing question. It's uh, if we compare the cost of flash calls to SMS termination, are they the same in the order of magnitude? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I know Asan knows some specific price points on this. Uh, it really depends on the market, right? But Asan, correct me if I'm wrong. I think generally, cook with flash, it's around um, on average like sixty percent the price of SMS, right? It really depends. Yeah, in, 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 in some really markets, depends. in some markets, even 90%. Yeah. I mean, SMS is 10 cents and Flash is 1 cent, just to give an example. Yeah. yeah. So it really, I like really... also Atai, if you have anything to add, uh, because Atai, we are we a are, uh, speaker by somehow, we are always in this type of event. So maybe you, <laughs> we, if you like to add anything as a closing, Atai. Sorry, Ross, I interfered in your job. No, 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 go ahead. Makes my job easier. Uh, Atai, do you want to give us some closing remarks? I think you're on mute if you're speaking. Oh, we might have lost that tie. Yeah. I think, we'll, I think we'll have to leave it. Sorry, Atai, we can't hear you if you're speaking. You're on mute. But yeah, I think we'll have to wrap it up there anyway. We're at the hour mark. Um, thank you so much for a brilliant session. Thank you, Itai, for the brilliant, uh, you know, kind of more personal examples. I think that really put into perspective how much of a real problem this is. And thank you, Theodore and Hassan, for giving such a great overview of the whole context and, you know, the solutions basically to fix the problem. Uh, and thank you to Vox Solutions for sponsoring the session. So, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.